Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on using the random number generation function in Excel to create pseudo-random numbers that follow specified distributions. Oftentimes in counseling research, we want to create random numbers that follow specified distributions as part of teaching or using statistics. You can find the random number generation function under data and then data analysis tools all the way to the right of that ribbon. If you don't have this data analysis option in this ribbon, you go to File and then Options. And then you have the Excel Options dialog, Add-ins, and then under Manage, Excel Add-ins, click Go, and then check off Analysis Tool Pack, and then click OK. So I'm going to move to the Data Analysis Tools. This is what the dialog looks like by default to select the tool we'll be using. In this case, it's going to be Random Number Generation. So I'm going to click that and then click OK. And you can see that there are certain arguments that the Random Number Generation dialog looks for, but it's dependent on what you have selected for distribution. Now you can see here it's set to discrete. I'm going to start at the top, which is a uniform distribution. And you can see the parameters are different for uniform than they were for discrete. So the first argument, and these don't change, is the number of variables and the number of random numbers. Those two arguments appear regardless of what distribution is selected. So I'm just going to input 1 for number of variables and 100 for the number of random numbers. So you can see for uniform, the parameters are between one value and another. So let's say between 1 and 4. So we want a uniform distribution between 1 and 4. With these parameters set between 1 and 4 and the uniform distribution selected, what we would expect to see is that there's an equal probability that any value between 1 and 4 will be generated in this distribution. Keep in mind that it's not just integers but values with many digits to the right of the decimal will also be displayed. Then we have random seed. Now I won't be using this feature in the random number generation function, but say that you want to generate this distribution, a uniform distribution with parameters between 1 and 4, and you wanted to generate the exact same distribution with the exact same values later on. You could put a value in here, we call that the random seed, and then close out of Excel, come back in and put that exact random seed back in, and it'll produce the same distribution. Then we have the output range under output options. I'm going to select that instead of the new worksheet, which is the default. You can also specify a new workbook. I'm going to set the out output range. I'm going to set that to A1 and then click OK and we have here pseudo random numbers that form a uniform distribution. So we can go here to insert and insert statistic chart on this ribbon and we'll put up a histogram. And we can see we only have the five bars here but we expect these to be fairly close in height and you see that is the case. So this is a uniform distribution. The histogram should be flat or mostly flat. Moving back to the data ribbon and data analysis, open up the random number generation function again and move to normal. Now this is a fairly common distribution that we would be using in statistics, the normal distribution. And the parameters for the normal distribution are fairly straightforward. It asks for a mean and a standard deviation. I'm going to set the mean to 50 and the standard deviation to 10 which is a t-score, it's a standard score. And then the output range is going to come back here to A1. I want to change this to B1. And again, just one variable and a hundred random numbers. I click OK and we have 100 pseudo random numbers that should form a normal distribution. So I go back to this chart, I can just drag the selection from column A to column B and you can see now it updates for the second variable and this has a skew to it but it does appear to be normally distributed. Again resetting random number generation 
Moving down to Bernoulli, you can see the in the parameter section for the Bernoulli distribution, you only have the p-value. So with the Bernoulli distribution, you specify a p-value and then you'll get a series of zeros and ones that correspond to that probability. So let's say that we want to simulate a situation where there's an 80% chance of success. So we put 0.8 as the p-value, 80% chance of success, and I'm going to move the output range to column C and click OK. So we would expect that 80% of the values in column C would be a 1 and 20% would be a 0. So if I select the values in this column, you can see the sum down here is 77, so fairly close. If I go back to the histogram, uh, this distribution will look quite a bit different than the normal distribution. You can see you just have 0 and 1 here. Going back up to data analysis, move to the next distribution. This one is the binomial. And for binomial and the Poisson distributions, I have separate videos. So I'm just going to move quickly through the parameters here. For binomial, you're going to have a p-value and a number of trials. So let's say that we have a 75% chance of success as our probability value, and the number of trials will be 10. And again, I'll move the output range over one column. This will be the D column. And click OK. And we have pseudo-random numbers generated that follow a binomial distribution with a p-value of 0.75 and the number of trials set to 10. So with the histogram, it looks like this. And notice the average here is 7.62. Moving back up to data analysis, and moving back into the random number generation function, I'm going to switch to Poisson. And again, I have a separate video here for the Poisson distribution. The Poisson distribution is often used when trying to determine the probability that a specified number of events will occur in a specified amount of time. For example, if you were managing a mental health agency and you expected 10 clients to visit every hour, you would set lambda to 10. And again, I'll move this output range one column over. And we have pseudo random numbers generated that follow the Poisson distribution. So I go back to histogram. I'll move over here so you see this is what this particular distribution looks like. Notice the average here is 10.41. Going back to data analysis, I'll go back in. The second to last distribution is patterned. This one is quite a bit different than the other distributions available here. It creates a pattern of numbers and it has a lot of parameters. So let's say, for example, we set the from from 1 to 10 in steps of 4. We repeat each number two times, and we repeat the sequence three times. I'll move the output range again over one column, and let's see how these parameters are processed by this function. It's from 1 to 10 in steps of 4, repeating each number two times, repeating the sequence three times. I'll click OK. I'll move this histogram over. So you can see that we have 1, 5, 9, and 10. So 5, of course, 4 greater than 1, 9, 4 greater than 5. 10 is included because that's the value in the 2 text box. So it's from 1 to to 10. So it's going to include 10 even though it's not 4 greater than 9. And each value is repeated twice. We see that 1 and 1, 5 and 5, and so on. And this entire sequence is repeated three times. Now I still had the number of random numbers set to 100, but notice it'll only go until the sequences are complete, in this case 24. Moving back up for the last distribution, we can see that it's named discrete. The input under parameters for a discrete distribution is a value and a probability. So I've put some fictitious data in here to demonstrate 
the discrete distribution, say that we have four possible outcomes. Success, partial success, failure, and unknown. And we've coded these outcomes as 0, 1, 2, and 3. And we know that we have a 70% probability of success, a 5% of partial success, a 15% probability of failure, and a 10% probability that we won't know, that the outcome is unknown. This function will create a distribution based on these values. So we would expect the zero here to appear roughly 70% of the time in this distribution. So when you go to parameters, you select both the code and the probability. And again, I'll move the column over one and click OK. And I'll go ahead and select the histogram again and select this latest distribution, the discrete distribution. And you can see here that there were 70 zeros and six values for one, we would expect five, 15 values for two, which is what we would have expected, and nine values for unknown, for value three, we would have expected 10. I hope you found this video on using the random number generation function in Excel to be useful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me, and I'll be happy to assist you.